Hello and welcome to the final round Men's Pro Open League card coverage of the 2018 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge presented by Innova Discs. We've got Big Julie Commentary, Jeremy Colling, and Paul Uliberry. Yeah, I can't wait to get started. We got an awesome card as usual. <laughs> as you would say, as you are <laughs> featured on this card here. Macbeth leading the way, couple 11 unders. Ricky Wysocki and Seppo all shooting 11 down during the second round. Phenomenal play here. It's going to be a tight battle all the way through the finish unless Paul has something to say about it. He's been playing some excellent golf through two rounds. Hole one is a par four, 605 foot turnover. Just want to keep this one in the middle somewhere and leave yourself a little short downhill approach. As far as par fours go on this course, one of the easier ones to start off with, but it's one that you definitely could get in trouble if you don't turn your if you turn your tee shot over too soon, or if you throw it too far off the fairway. Yeah, the tee shot on this is super demanding. You have to be in almost a perfect spot to have just a straight shot at it. Otherwise, you're going to have to scramble. And Paul's been throwing this turnover rock all week. And it has... Faded long all three times and does he, oh, first two rounds and has done it a third straight round. Consistency, you know. Yeah, that's Six exactly eight. the mark of a true champion. <laughs> Seppo throwing his super flippy PA3 here. And that looks absolutely perfect. Oh yeah, look at this thing drifting right, right down the fairway. That's exactly what you want. There's even a trail to show you the dead center. And he hit that trail. He threw that so good that he changed my shot that I was <laughs> going to throw on the tee. I'm serious. I love when that happens. Play your own game, but you can be influenced by others. Absolutely. And Ricky going with the compass here, just throwing... Beautiful shot. Wow, that's going to drift a little bit wide there, but I think that's going to be fine, though. Yeah. So how did it change your shot? Well, I was going to throw driver, and I, I clubbed down to a mid-range. Okay. Um, I'd been going long the last few rounds, and when I saw Seppo kind of hug that left left side, I decided to not hug the left side and chuck it in the woods. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit early there. Thanks, Seppo. Yeah, way to go. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for throwing it's it perfect. You play your own game. Golly, how many times I got to tell you that? I am, though. See, I'm right back to my own game. <laughs> uh, this has been called a Yuli roller, no longer called a flick roller. That's a really good shot from there. It's going to leave you a layup zone from about 56 feet. Mm-hmm. Up, but right from the middle, this is looking pretty good. Oh, the double kick there. Yeah, Just he's going to want that one back. That, yeah. that was right in his wheelhouse there. He has so much touch with that putter from that distance. And look at Paul getting super stretchy. Somebody's been doing yoga. I don't know what that position is called, but he made it look pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> He made it look pretty good. And look at where Ricky's tee shot got him to. That is That's far. way up the fairway. Simple harp approach there, back door. Seppo with a long look. Just off to the left side. Paul with a full flex shot from 54 feet. Yeah, I just even started giggling at myself after I put it down. <laughs> if, you, if you could hear past our commentary. <laughs> oh my gosh. And Paul is off the mark on the right. That's going to open the door here for Ricky to gain a stroke. And he is within two strokes. It's a really great start. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mid-level difficulty all weekend for this hole. Either the ninth or 10th easiest hole in the course. Oh, gosh. 
Uh, Seppo's gonna take a bogey after a picture-perfect drive. And, you know, I, I'm not gonna say that that's, it's not a calling card. Seppo's a great putter. He just, his throwing ability makes his putting look worse than it is at times because he's such a great thrower. Does that, if that he makes has a putt sense. on every hole. Hole two is a par three, 380 feet. Super demanding line here. As we've been saying all weekend, you really have to decide what side of this tree the drone is flying at do you want to go on, the inside or the outside. The outside brings a few more trees in, but it's a little bit more natural. That flip up line is very tight to hit. But if you do hit that initial gap, the fairway does open up quite a bit more. But no matter what you do, you're gonna be getting close to trees. There's no way to really secure a great tee shot all the way through. Rick is hit that early gap. That is a skinny gap to hit. Let's see if Paul can make the oh, correction. Oh, that looks so yeah, that's, good. That's good. Yeah. That's really great. That looks so wow. good. Yeah, that, that's not an easy, easy shot right there. Mm -hmm. and, and that's as good as you can throw it. We haven't seen anyone through the first three rounds hit the line like this and that's just I mean said that the disc can't really go through the fairway without being close to trees that's about as close as you can get from hitting trees or as far away as you can get from hitting trees right. and that's going that out back door route and yeah it's going to kick you to actually probably somewhat technical 80 foot approach Something yeah, like yeah, something like that. I was happy with it. I was made it past those first couple that I mm -hmm. had. I mean, yeah. It's it's really a bonus hole. These initial me. trees really are the separator between safe par, which is a good score, and an easy par. And if you're really lucky, you can get a birdie. Ricky's gonna have a forty footer. Oh yeah, that there is. to save par. So. And if you drop too many strokes to make Beth early, you can. Bye. Played, yeah. yeah. See ya. Wave goodbye. Ricky and Paul have that. That thing about them that if they get a little bit of breathing room, it's just afterburners. I ha I'm that same same way at C tiers. It's crazy. <laughs> C tier, B tier master, Paul Uliberry. Man, I can just go. I'm, you I'm know. sure you can. And Ricky from. 45 or so. Just sets it in there. Yeah. And to be noted, actually, Ricky, before this round, he actually has the stomach flu and was in the ER the night before. Yeah, we didn't mention that. Yeah, he was in the ER. He came straight to the course from the ER, I believe. Right. He was sick all night. Apparently, it was bad. Like, one of the worst sicknesses he could have is Paul taps in his birdie. Seppo taps in his par. Yeah, so he was drinking lots of fluids and, you know, just trying to stay hydrated and, you know, still dropping in putts, though. <laughs> As he always does. Hole three, par four, 660 feet through this tunnel here. And take a look at the sky because it's a... You got two holes where you can see the sky. It's this one and the next one. Other than that, all woods. This is one of the easier par fours in the course. This is one players are going to want to get their threes on. It's not too much in the way. You just want to, if you can get your tee shot past that tunnel, really no matter where you are, you're going to have a look somewhat to attack the green. It's just about keeping this, the pace of the disc um, correct coming into this downslope green. is just fine right there. Yeah, that's actually perfect. He's gonna have actually the hyzer approach in that he wants to throw with mm -hmm. uh, that Nova being a backhand dominant player that he is. He's an everything dominant player. More of a backhand dominant player though from that distance with the Nova? <laughs> yeah, for sure, you win. <laughs> <laughs> and Ricky biting off a whole lot there. He might have been sick last night, but he's hungry for birdies. And he'll be throwing a sidearm from that distance, being more of a sidearm dominant player from oh, that distance. Oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. 
and this is that Lavender X1 that you've been throwing so well for the last couple of weeks. Maybe the last year or so. Yeah, no, that one's been in the bag for a while. I really, it's definitely a go-to for straighter shots for me. This is an H1B2, if I'm not mistaken. And, and is... Seppo just gets so much power out of kind of a smaller swing, but it incredible he just turns power. on it, man. He yeah. just rips shots. And the PA Wonder has come out from the sidearm dominant player. A little bit of rootage there, but that didn't hurt you too much. That's inside 25 feet or so. Yeah. Anything on that green you're happy with in, in the mm -hmm. circle, really. And just like round two, Seppo's going to have a slam dunk. Hopefully he doesn't screw that up, though, because Finns don't really slam dunk very much. They don't play that much basketball. I'm, I'm sorry, Finns. I... I've been come up with some stupid things about Finns in the last two rounds, and I don't mean it. You guys are my favorite country besides the U.S. and Estonia. Okay, you need to stop. I'm done. There's another good shot there from Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these guys are making it look too easy. you got to fill it in sometimes with some, some garbage. Yeah, see? Look, cool. Birdie. I mean, I'm going to predict that Ricky makes a birdie, and so does Paul, and so does Seppo. Spoiler alert. They all birdie every hole. They're all the best <laughs> players in the world. <laughs> now this hole is played really well by yeah, the group. I absolutely. mean, that's not going to happen every time. No, of course not. <laughs> but that's, yeah, star frame on this on this course is very rare. Yeah, it's awesome. Hole four. Par four, 675 feet. We've seen Ricky go with rollers here, which have gotten way down there. We also saw Macbeth go with a huge Anheuser backhand drive. Interested to see how these players back up their drives from round two. They're getting way down there. And we were talking about it earlier during the round two coverage that we can potentially see a player get somewhere in the eagle range for the long jump putt. I know Seppo certainly has that power. I know that you've got that kind of distance as well. So I don't know. I mean, it's kind of early in the round. But, I mean, these guys are chasing Paul, who's playing really well. So, this is a place where you could get a bit aggressive. Paul just puts a hurt, hurting on this disc right here. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. And that's a jump putt. Paul's yeah. jump putting that without question. But, and, and we've seen him make so much longer putts than that. Yeah. Wow. Mm hmm. And he still have another. Eight to ten feet of ceiling there. What I'm saying is he could have thrown it even further. And that's pretty good too. He's gonna to be mm -hmm. a little bit obstructed to the left there, but with his scramble skills, I'm guessing he'll have something. Yeah, you'd think so, but the miss on this hole is as far right as you can. Far left is not good. See, this is a much better line for the roller because Without question, you're going to finish on the right side, which opens up that pinch gap. Ooh, did I get it, one? <laughs> almost. You did in round <laughs> two. Yeah. It's right two about where two. you were. Yeah, it's right about where you were yesterday. And you can just see the power right yep. there. Seppo unleashes. Yeah, oh. and if he didn't hit that branch, that thing was going home. Oh. I wanted to see that finish for sure. Yeah, that... <laughs> little branches hanging down from the tree. Stop that. But he's still got the open look. But a little bit tight, yep. Yeah. Great approach there. Went with the M4 there, I see. Oh, and Ricky gets so much distance that that little pinch gap that makes it really difficult for most people to approach, he's gone past that, just had a few trees in the way and able I, to navigate all the way. I'm thinking that that was harder than he made it look. Well, maybe. I mean... Paul was trying to... Nobody makes that 
distance jump putt look easier? I mean, no. nobody. No. There's no wobble on the disc. I feel like Paul's definitely like the Steph Curry of disc golf. Yeah. From the distance, for, for sure. It, he just makes so many long ones that you're just like, you're not even that impressed anymore. You just kind of like shh, roll your eyes. You're just... Right. I wish I could do that. Like, I'm stressing that eight-footer I just made, <laughs> you know? And he's yeah. whipping it from 120 feet. Yeah, no doubt. The thing that I really like about Paul's putt is that it comes in at the same speed, whether it's 80 feet or 18 feet. Yeah. And that's just crazy to imagine how you can keep it that consistent. Hole five, par five, 690 foot hole through this tight tunnel. I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this hole and the host of many touring professionals, including myself, Mike and Sandal Tolbert. Tight tunnel tee shot. You want to keep something somewhere in the fairway. And then from there, tight tunnel. Just want to keep something in the fairway. From there, just want to pitch up on top of these rocks. Straightforward, any tree kicks typically result in bad tree kicks on this hole so very important you don't need to go for a ton of distance off either one of these shots the first two shots but you just need to keep it somewhere in the middle pretty that, good yeah close enough to the middle it's a serviceable tee shot there he might be a little bit out of position for backhand there to mm -hmm. the green, which I'm guessing is what he wants, but he'll still have a yeah. fairly easy look. His to get forehand to the fairway, yeah. should serve him just fine from there. Oh, Ricky's and with that, that kick, now he is in position mm -hmm. maybe to go for the green there. Ricky did three this hole during round two. And there is another player who's in position for Eagle. Great shot there from Paul Uliberry. And Seppo has us turned a little bit. Can this hyzer back? It tries to. And there's a storyline behind that as well as Seppo was warming up in the field and lost his go-to mid-range, so he had to oh, no. put this new white one in the bag, and it was doing all kinds of different stuff. Out there. Okay. All right. Well, a good approach shot there from the woods. It's a difficult shot to throw with your back turned to the basket. And Ricky eyeing up the shot. That's That skips quite a bit up there. He's actually got, what, 45, 50 feet? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. A nice approach there. I'm sure you're trying to match that. And this is drifting. That's got the distance. That's in a similar spot as well. And we still haven't even got to Paul's drive. Yeah, we were we were actually Oof. letting everybody in the fairway tee off first <laughs> there on our second shot. So I'm just kidding. <laughs> Watch it. Watch it, buddy. <sighs> Seppo displaying that touch that he has with the sidearm again. Those trees right there in the middle really make the player have to decide if they're going to go Anheuser backhand or Anheuser sidearm coming into the green. And Paul's trying to give that a little bit of a run. Going driver from about 80 feet. Really no other option besides laying up there. It's unfortunate. It would be nice to have a nice long look at it. I had a long look at it, but I laid it up because I can't do that. And Ricky just been on fire outside the circle this weekend. Wow. Awesome putt for Eagle. Eagles in round two and three. Silverlet eagled in round one and two. This hole was picked up by several players. 
Shout out to Calvin Heimberg and Sean Johnson for their threes on hole five as well. Card played that hole phenomenal. Three birdies and an eagle. Awesome. Hole six is a par four, 625 feet. Players just want to keep their drive down the right side of this fairway and avoid skipping too hard off to the left. Shots that drift off to the left too much are going to be behind this bunker of trees that you can see coming up on the drone cam right here. If you can keep it, keep it off to the right side, it's just a putter, maybe a sidearm flex shot, depending on how good your tee shot's position is. Yeah, you just don't want to skip too far left. I feel like the tee shot kind of begs you to throw a more stable disc to hit the line a little more, and then it could skip off to the left, and I think that's a well-designed hole. Rick catches those leaves, which might do exactly what I was saying and go maybe a little too far mm -hmm. left, but he'll still have something. For yeah. Also, if you get it a little too high, it, it kind of pulls you to the left as well. Correct. Oh, Paul has gone super inside. That is a misrelease, and that is getting all the love in the world to stay wow. in the fairway. That could have been a really bad kick. Anything that kicks left is instant danger. And that's the line you're looking for right there. If this can hyzer off these trees, oh, just drifted a little bit too far right. But I'm so far on the right hand side that I'm still gonna have that kind of straight mm -hmm. straight shot into the into the green there. I'm just gonna leave a long approach, but Seppo, now this is I'm ready to call this this is what you want. Yeah. <laughs> Even that required a little bit of some tree love there, but a good 330 feet from the pin and yeah beautiful approach shot trying to keep those percentages high oh yeah that that's uh gonna leave him on the right right side now which is actually gonna be tougher to access the green Speaking than even the left side, which was tough. And this is just oh, like, oh, I'll do whatever you want, I guess, these days. <laughs> <sighs> look at uh, look at the bunker. I mean, there, that is a full row of trees. Yeah. Most, most people aren't getting to there. No. And Seppo throws a really great drive, leaves him with a... I'm going to give that a B-minus approach from there, because that's such a good drive. Yeah. Maybe a B. I'll, I'll give it a yeah, B. Yeah, give him a B. I'll give him a he's B. He's got 20 in. The minus is just personal. In. Yeah. <laughs> and Rick, he's going to have mm, Circle's Edge for par. Mm-hmm. Which is just a tap in these days. Wow, good putt. That's a good scramble for him. Mm-hmm. Speaking of tap ins. Yeah, that one hit with authority. Yeah, five down through six. Pretty fast is real, folks. Oh, Seppo. I'm going to change that back to a B-minus approach. I, I mean, I think it was a good approach. I think we could give his putt a lower grade. Shouldn't have him a putt from that distance off the tee. Why is Jimmy yelling at everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy McElvain, the tournament director, is a vocal human being, ladies and gentlemen. He does. He, there's a lot of spectators, and there's a lot of tight woods to get these spectators through mm -hmm. these narrow alleyways. It's not an easy job to control He's all this. He's done a great job. Yeah. Hole 7, par 3, 370 foot, slightly downhill. Actually, moderately downhill hole here. Mm -hmm. Just want to hit that initial gap and miss that tree in the middle, and then you're set up for a birdie town look. Not many par threes on the course, only four of them. So anytime you get a look at it, getting a two, you're happy about it. <laughs> it's late, but people give me a break. Paul, this is not a committed shot here. I believe he's going to the Firebird. It looked like he was just trying to hit the gap and not really put it down there for a look. You've been dissecting this hole 
and once again, just throwing beautiful shots on this one. Only a couple inches away from drawing metal. Don't look at me and smile when I'm doing commentary. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> see that. I'm just happy right now. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> he gets in there for a look as well. Oh yeah, he's in the circle. Inside the circle. It didn't look like he really put enough pace on it, but that's downhill. Yeah, I'm surprised even seeing it for the second time. <laughs> right. I really am. And Seppo just kind of. That just hung on to his fingers a little mm -hmm. too long there. But this is a really great approach. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. What a scramble there. That I means essentially reteeing almost. Right. That tree is such an early kick. Wow, Paul got all the way through. Oh, man. Just off the top rim. That's going to give Ricky within one stroke closer to Paul. Only two back. As Seppo's fallen a bit off the pace. Whoa. Speaking of birdie fest, that's five in a row. Yeah. How did you do that? I was just kind of throwing the tee shots close enough to make the putts. It wasn't getting too crazy like these guys. <laughs> you know, I wasn't running those eagle putts or anything, but... If you're throwing good tee shots, this, this course will allow you to get through. Yeah, see that. Hole 8, par 5, 670 foot hole. This one is another one that can be eagled. It's been eagled in the past. They decided to move the basket back a little bit further this year. You're going to want to see these drives just crest this hill if they can and stay somewhat in the middle. From there, it's a turnover, maybe a hyzer flip sidearm. Who knows, maybe a crazy backhand roller. Uh, people are crazy these days. I don't know what people are doing anymore. But the basket is on top of this pyramid. It's definitely attackable though. And Paul Uliberry lining up his D2 here. This is a bit right. Yeah, that was pretty oh. of a tee shot there for me. And a bad kick off to the left. I mean, anywhere that disc was going was going to be bad. It was not a good shot yeah. at all. Yeah, and Ricky thrown right into the gallery there. That's off to the right side as well. That's well out of position. And Paul going with that T-Bird oh, three. Yeah, Paul throwing oh. into the gallery as well. Huh? <laughs> if the gallery is right in the middle of the fairway. Oh, man, he's good. Mm -hmm. He's consistently really good. Seppo with this really flippy f5 and he needs to miss that oh that's gonna be dangerous over there kick off to the left looks like you're the first one up here and you just have like maybe a tiny gap for the flex forehand and that went Oof. sideways and backwards well, that's gonna decrease the sidearm percentages yes mm -hmm. but they're so high that they can take a hit and still keep going as long as, as long as I don't do that again, ever, <laughs> right. I'll be okay. And Seppo able to advance the disc a little bit. And I did better. Yeah, you did better that time. That's in position to probably have a look for the par. Yeah, maybe. It's going to be... Tough. Yeah, I'll have some. I should have some. Mm -hmm. I've, I've fly the fairway pretty far. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> Ricky kind of playing the risky shot through the woods. Paul doing... Flying the fairway pretty far as well. Yeah. Flying the fairway up to... Wow, what is he? About 75, 80 feet from the pin there? Yeah. Seppo just oh, had a little no. gap there that he needed to hit, but gets a kind of a bad kick to the right. Oh, good work there. You, you knew what was going to happen. You tried to make it seem like you were out of position. That was a good shot. I mean, it wasn't easy. No, it wasn't but easy. I did hit the first tree in front of me, so I needed to make something happen. 
And Seppo's going to have a long look. Is that for his That's for par? Par. Yep. Okay. And Ricky went through everything, and now he just has a little oh, chip man. shot up there. That's yeah. crazy. Really well done there. Great touch on that approach. Paul from 80 feet. Is he going to do this? Get in. Oh, oh, my gosh. For Eagle. And Seppo able to save his par. Yeah, what a great scramble from him right there. He was never in position until he made that putt. And that is a good scramble for you as well. What are you smiling? What are you smiling about? I knew I got out of there with something, something <laughs> that I didn't deserve. <laughs> yeah. You earned it. I'd say, I'd say you deserved it. And I, Ricky able to scramble a birdie out of that somehow. And Paul almost with that amazing eagle. He's off to a great start. Him and Ricky both are. On to hole nine here. Par four. 555 foot shot here. Players are going to throw a straight disc that turns over a bit through this gap here. These two tiny guardians really set the pace for how this hole needs to be played. You can get past those two right there and turn over and into the fairway. Really don't have that much distance left for the approach, but it is technical. You do have this tree in the middle, and there's enough trees up on the green that really keep you honest. Yeah, absolutely. If you're a conservative player, if you're a conservative player, you can throw a straight shot that kind of lands into a nice little spot that you can shoot down the right side of that fairway. And if you get really angry, <laughs> you can throw a shot similar to this. And Ricky pushing that left side. God, that takes so much trust. Oh my goodness. Man, I just want to see what that would have done without that last tree kick. That is such a big tee shot. I'm just surprised at how much you guys are trying to bite off. And Paul seems to be playing this one a little bit safer with the rock play, the high rock play, just to make the fairway. But he does not. That's way back there. Yeah, he gets a kick, but it looks like he, there's actually a short pad over to the left there, and if you land in that kind of fairway where that starts, you can actually have a shot into the green. So he might have caught a good break there. And this looks like maybe too early of the turn. I could be wrong. And the kick right back to the middle. You're in perfect position there. Yeah, that was a fortunate kick mm -hmm. and a fortunate flight. Mm -hmm. What else? It was lucky. <laughs> yep, what else? Happy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That was all the words. <laughs> and Seppo with the early tree kick. Going to have to go with a forehand roller. He's going with a Yuli roller shot. And look at this thing. Wow. Wow. That was incredible. Just, if it had stood up just the slightest bit, that would have been up there in the circle. Still great. I oh, mean, my gosh. so what? happy to be able to, you know, get it up and down. From yeah, it's there. a jump hut, a long jump hut for Birdie. And like I said, he had actually oh, got far enough to where he had a straight shot into the pin. A bit of an unfortunate root or rock. It's kind of hard to call it from here, but that was looking so beautiful. And Paul's call and go in. Mm, almost. Yeah, that would have been nice. That would have been so cool. I would have felt like one of these guys. <laughs> and Ricky jump hunting his approach. That worked out. I mean, it got a nice little kick and then a roll like he was going to make it from where it was up way up there anyway. But Yeah, doesn't matter. Right. We're going to call it 49 feet. That's yeah, really good. I just have That's seen on the stripe, and, and that's really good as well. Yeah, it's really good. I feel like if you go back to when I was doing commentary last year, I was, like, getting so crazy hyped up for these putts. Now I'm just getting, like, oh, gosh. 
What happened? I got a little distracted. Okay. There's a lot of people bunched up. Everyone wants to be in the right position and watch the action. Sometimes it can be a bit distracting. But as players, we have to get past that and make the putts. And that's going to be... That's a, that's a tough part to take after that perfect kick and drive and then almost makes it. Yeah. But look at these scores. One bogey on the front nine, a lot of under. Macbeth and Ricky separating themselves from the field by quite a bit. Impressive here. Make sure you tune in for the back nine, the conclusion of the 2018 Delaware Disc Golf Challenge.